Rex Tillerson was in an awkward situation for a number of reasons. You know, um, if you think about the last four first-term secretaries of state, James Baker, Warren Christopher, Colin Powell, Hillary Clinton, all had served in government, all had a established track record, and, and so much easier to make the adjustment from you know, a previous role to being the Secretary of State. You know, certainly Rex Tillerson has relevant experience to be the Secretary of State, but his, his challenge yesterday was to you know, convey that he can make the shift from the executive suite at Exxon you know, to Foggy Bottom. Uh, and then the backdrop is the Russian hacking, and normally you would think that uh, his knowledge of Russia firsthand dealing with Russian leadership would be seen as an asset, but he was walking into a political context on Capitol Hill. They are much more skeptical than the president-elect about Russia. Uh, they want to try to punish uh, you know, Russia for the interference in the election, uh, and he had to find a way to, you know, to convey the right. seriousness of the issue. Yeah, without necessarily boxing P in the president-elect. Very, very difficult handicap challenge. Handicap it for us. Do you think there's a chance that Rex Tillerson does not get uh, approved or get confirmed? I, I think he's got a nar ma uh, narrow margin of error. I think it's still more likely that he will be confirmed. Uh, but obviously, on a bipartisan basis, I think the senators are going to look for some greater leverage that the Trump administration is going to cooperate in terms of a new round of sanctions. You know, once they take over. And do you think it's an asset that he has, the experience that he's had in the business world related to Russia or not in this instance? Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, he's, he's obviously a global player. He's got an established uh, world view. He's got a, a contact list both in the Middle East and in Europe uh, that, that is significant. Um, I, I mean, ironically, yesterday, probably his, his most significant stumble, you know, involved uh, how, to con how, you know, how, how he responded to questions about what Exxon did or did not do relevant to, you know, previous rounds of, of sanctions. He suggested that Exxon didn't lobby against, uh, you know, Russia sanctions. And then, you know, a, a couple of senators said, well, yeah, you guys called me, you guys called me. And he had to convey, well, we talked about the impact of sanctions without necessarily taking a position as to whether they should or should not be imposed. Right. There were a couple of instances where he also said that he wanted to know more information or they didn't have um, a, a dearth of experience uh, with. For example, he was asked about uh, on the Cuba topic, uh, for example. Was that beneficial to him to be able to say, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't have the experience or I, that's what I was trying to understand, whether it helps or hurts him? Yeah. Well, I, I think I think that's that's the normal approach that uh, that nominees take. They they acknowledge the interest that Congress has in an issue. They promise to come back and work with Congress on on developing, you know, a, a national policy. But they, they try to, uh, you know, to try to find the safe area that, yeah, this is an issue. I plan to look into it very significantly if you confirm me. But I, I'm, not gonna get, I'm not going to try to tell you, you know, what the president's policy is going to be you know, before he actually is in office. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.